If you're fairly new to 3D printing, maybe you've heard of base mode, but never tried it. Or maybe you just never heard of it. Maybe you went to Thingiverse and downloaded a file like this candy dish. You loaded it into Cura, you sliced it, you printed it, and then you got this. When you expected this. In this video, we're going to explore the mysteries of Cura's spiralized outer contour setting, the pluses, the minuses, how to use it, and get you pushing plastic. We're going to take a look at Cura spiralized outer contour, or vase mode as it's more commonly known in the 3D printing community. When you enable vase mode, you can print almost any shape with the thickness of just a single wall. Of course, that means you need less time, less material for the model. But remember, I said almost any shape. It's not good for everything. It works best for non-functional models with a continuous cross-section and no holes or gaps in the geometry. It's primarily used for printing aesthetic and seamless models, but it's also great for printing models like rockets, containers, pyramids, fins, sculptures, and of course, bases. When spiralized uh, outer contour is enabled, the nozzle will continuously outline the contour of the model in a spiral motion as it moves upward in the Z or Z direction, hence the name spiralized outer contour. After first applying the bottom layers, of course. There are technically no layers as we typically think of them in 3D printing. Now, before the armchair engineers jump all over me, yes, the preview in Cura does count them as layers, but the model is built by a continuous smooth movement of the Z-axis. There are no travels, no retractions, just a one long uninterrupted string of filament turned on top of itself to create the printed model. For this reason, you can only have one model on the build, pl build plate at a time. So let's open up Cura, add spiralized outer contour to our print settings and give it a go. If you don't have the option for spiralized outer contour, come on up here into the search box and start to type the word spiral. Cura is gonna find it before we can finish typing the word. And there it is under special modes. Click on the settings symbol. Eh, you know what? I'm not sure what that is. I'm used to seeing a gear for settings. Somebody really needs to give that symbol a name. If you have a good name for it, post it down in the comments. All right, back to work. After clicking on that non-name symbol, the settings visibility dialog box opens up. Check the box for spiralized outer contour. And you can also click on smooth spiralized contours. It's supposed to smooth out the Z seam, but if base mode is actually seamless, wouldn't this really be an unnecessary option? I've never used it myself, and I haven't had a problem with Z seams when using base mode. Now, with those two boxes checked, we can close out the setting visibility dialog box, and we'll also click on the X in the search box to return us back to our list of printer settings. Now scroll on down in the printer settings until we reach the special mode section and that's where we'll find spiralized outer contour. Now as you can see I have a simple cylinder I drew up in Fusion 360. It's got a diameter of 51 millimeters and a height of 75 millimeters. It's solid with a top and a bottom. Let's slice it without spiralized outer contour enabled and take a look at it. And it's going to take four hours and 35 minutes to print. Wow. Anyways, we got 375 layers, two walls. It has a top. And it's packed with 20% infill. But we want a simple single wall empty cup. So. We're going to enable the spiralized outer contour and re-slice. But before I do it, I want to put it out there that 
Some people recommend setting your temperatures about 10 degrees higher than you normally would print at and then reduce your temperature to your standard temp after about, say, two minutes just to get a few solid layers down. I've never done it, but I'm just putting it out there. If you're having problems, that might be an option for you. Another thing commonly done is to reduce the print speed to about 50%. I usually don't do that either. I'm I already print slow. But if I'm having a problem with a model where the layers are separating, I'll slow it down a bit. I'll see that happen on models that are like bell-shaped occasionally. It depends on the detail of the model. Okay, so let's check the, the spiralized outer contour and we'll re-slice. And let's see what we got. We're still at 375 layers. We don't have a top, but we do have a bottom and we don't have any infill and as you can see we got a single wall from the bottom to the top it's only going to take us a little over an hour to print so let's print this and see what we get that doesn't look too bad pretty much as advertised in curious preview don't you think single wall no top no seam no infill just an empty cup. But as you can see, it's a little flimsy. And since there's only a single wall, that's what we can expect. That's why spiralized outer contour is good for non-functional models or basically models that'll just sit on display or maybe as a pencil holder. What would you use it for? I also printed this rectangular shape in base mode. It's the same basic size as the cylinder. 51 millimeters square, 75 millimeters tall. Your shape doesn't have to be round. It just has to have a continuous cross section without holes or gaps. But as you can see, it's also a little flimsy. It's typical of models printed in base mode. So what if we want to print a model that was designed for base mode, but we want it stronger? Let's jump back into Cura and I'll show you a workaround. All right, so I still have the cylinder loaded, so I'm gonna use this as an example. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off spiralized outer contour. We'll take a slice of this, and we're gonna look at the preview. And we have two walls, infill, and a top. Now let's change a few settings. The first thing I'm going to do is come up here to my wall settings and I'm going to change my wall thickness to 1.2 millimeters. Now, with a single wall thickness being 0.4 millimeters from our 0.4 millimeter nozzle, we'll get a to total of three walls at, at 1.2. The next thing I'm going to do is change my top layers from 4 to 0 and I'm going to set the infill to zero as well. Now let's re-slice and have a look. Nice. Now we have a cup with the bottom, no top, no infill, and three walls. But it looks like we also have a seam. Hmm. Let's print this and see what we get. And here it is. It's a lot more solid than the version we printed in base mode. In fairness, it did take almost an extra hour to print, but still, not too bad. While I was at it, I applied the same technique to the rectangular version. And like the cylinder, gained a lot of strength. So if you ever have to print a cup or a vase-like object but need a little more strength, give this method a try. But remember, it's 3D printed, and in most cases, it will not hold liquid. If you want to make it waterproof, you could always spray it with some clear acrylic varnish. And because it's 3D printed, it is not food safe. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, hit that like button and tell me about it down below in the comments. I'd like to hear about your experiences with it. Smash that bell.
so you'll be notified on new content when it's released. Remember, live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe.